Right guys, so we are finally getting around to doing my tax return. I am late. I think I'm past the deadline, um, but I've just been too busy and I didn't really know what I was doing with it. However, I seem to have figured it out now. So I think we should be able to do it today. So I've just spent a little while um, filling it all out just so that I can like work out whether I'm doing it right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through the bits that I can run through and just explain what you need to be doing. Um, there's a couple of bits where I don't have a P45 or a P60, so I've had to look at my bank and improvise and hopefully it's right. I can't really do much about it if it's slightly out because I don't have the paper documents which would just tell me how much tax has been charged for that job, etc, etc. So hopefully it all works out fine. Um, I'm just going to double check, did I put the right figure in for that? Um, I don't think I did. Okay, so I've got the wrong, wrong figures in for one of them. So I'm just going to go in and change that and then I will run for it all with you and just show you as far as I can work out all the information and fingers crossed it's helpful just want to put it out there obviously I know I'm doing this late so it's not going to be useful for people this year however um you can now submit your tax return up until January so um and that is for 2020 21 to 22 um this one is 2020 to 21 so if you want to submit early you can so this might be helpful for you guys um but if you aren't submitting early then it will just show you whether you did your things right basically and hopefully you did because yeah i feel like when i went on here the first time it was really confusing um but now i seem to have come into a different part of the gov website and it's not as complicated as it was the first time whereas when i last went on this it just blew my mind i was like i can't figure out how to do this um but now i seem to have got it so fingers crossed um there is like a next section it says go next but i don't want to go next because obviously i want to show you but there might be some more information but what i'm going to do is show you this section which is fill out your return and then i'll let you know if there's any more to it as we move on with the video but at the moment this is the only information that i can see that you have to fill out but like i say there is a next section and i don't want to click it because i think that will submit it so we will see so i'm going to put you on screen record and i'm just going to run through the bits that i can actually show you so where is it um desktop recorder so, right, so this is the home section, so as you can see it shows you your progress, um, it shows you what you've entered, this was all saying like errors or not entered or whatever, so um, I've changed all those and there's details about you i can't go into it because it's got loads of personal information like p um what is it national insurance number but mine starts with p so that's why i was confused but yeah national insurance number um your gateway id like all your personal information is in there and that's where you fill out just like your name date of birth address like I say, your national insurance, um, your unique taxpayer ID, all things that you can't share. So that's why I can't go into it. Um, then there is this tailor your return. I can't remember. Yeah, so what you do here is obviously I had multiple jobs whilst I was in this year. So I had one job while I was doing the cakes and then I quit that and had another job later on. So you have to put those employments in so that it can work out how much tax you owe because it's likely and that's what I did. I was on an emergency tax so I paid tax for those jobs. I probably paid too much because 
um i was on emergency and i shouldn't have paid that and it will work it out and let you know whether you pay too much or whether it just like balances out so we will see hopefully i get a refund because i know definitely with this year's um with the cleaning job i was charged so much tax like a thousand pounds over the space of like four months um just because it was like 25 percent tax or something ridiculous but yeah so you just put in your employments and then you just fill out whether they were partnerships whether you earn over a certain amount a lot of it is pretty basic if i'm honest um then you have more questions so it's just about pensions dividends child benefit tax losses more pension information a lot of which probably won't be relevant to you um charity marriage allowance again none of this was relevant to me so i literally just clicked no tax advisor tax avoidance then um we have more of the same so that is the tail of your return then you have your employment so if you have multiple employments this bits for you so you put your employer um i don't mind sharing this that i'm completely aware that my wages are on this i don't mind sharing it it was like almost two years ago i'm not fast um for the purpose of the video i feel like it's useful to be able to actually see the boxes and i wanted to put my information in before i film this because i wanted to make sure it was right and now i know that i'm just gonna leave it in because otherwise it's too much hassle but yeah i know that wages are in there so i was at hamden for like four months so you just work out i didn't get a p45 from this so what i've had to do is total up all the wages on my bank account and then i mean it'll be too late by the time i submit this but like correct me if i'm wrong but what i did was um i that is 80 is that right so that is um that's before so you do the amount that was on your bank divided by 80 because that's with tax taken off then times it by 100 and you get the amount um so and then if you divide that by yeah okay yeah so this is how i did it hopefully it's correct at this point i don't really know what i'm doing so hopefully it's correct um so what i did to work it out if you didn't have a p45 or p60 you divide it by 80 because it's already had the tax taken off then times it by 100 so that you get the whole value before tax was taken um so then i got this value which is the 2000 then um i minus the amount that was different from my pay so the 2000 minus the 1600 1, yada yada that i actually got like in my bank so minus those two together then you get the tax amount so then you put the uk tax taken off in that box i didn't get any tips or other payments so you just leave that blank not a director um it's not an inside off payroll working arrangement or whatever that means i don't even know so i just said no did i receive any taxable benefits no and do i in claim employer expenses no again i'm not really sure what that is um no extra information then i did the same thing for my other work this one i was there for like three months so luckily i had a p60 for this because it made it way easier um so it told me the amount before tax and then the amount of tax that was taken to date so then you just enter that in and again it's the same questions are you a director do you claim any benefits so i just said no then we get to sweet things so this is your self-employment so if you don't have any other employments this is kind of the bit that you would start at but because i have other employments that's why they come first 
So is your annual turnover over 85,000? No. And then you answer all these questions, which none were relevant to me. Am I a farmer? Am I a foster carer? Um, it's all to do with like benefits and things that you might receive or like declaring um, any contributions that you receive, etc. So there's lots of questions about those, but none of them applied to me. So I just clicked none of them apply. Then it just asks you for um, your business name, your description. I'm not worried about the postcode before anyone maybe mentions it because it's on my website when people order things from me, they know my postcode. Um, the day I started and then whether you ceased trading before the year was up, which I didn't. Um, then you just put the date that your accounting is made up to because this is for 2020 to 21, mine is till March. Then you do your income. So I have QuickBooks, um, I would 100% recommend it. So I'll quickly just show you what it looks like. So as you can see, it shows you over the months. So in my first year, I made almost 12,500. Um, and then business expenses was 5,600. And that is because in the first year you're buying, um, I bought mixers, I bought a lot of startup stuff like cake tins, fridges like there's a lot of startup costs in your first year so I wouldn't be worried about it being high my expenses definitely aren't that high this year and if they are it's not um what I would class as material expenses it is like ingredients so that is slightly different because the more orders you get the more expenses you're going to have on ingredients because that's obviously a cost um but I don't have as high expenses on things like cake tins, colourings, boxes, all that kind of stuff because um, like colourings and things, if you've already got some then you're obviously not going to be buying them whereas when you first start you have to buy all this stuff to actually begin your business. So that's where you get the total from, um, it's just the total of all of your income so you just note that in there. There's no other business income. This, um, from what I could see, is like grants and things that people receive, rental income, payments you received. Um, yeah, third party payments. None of it was relevant. Um, would you? How would you like to record your expenses? I put a single total value. I thought that was way easier to just do it like that. And then total allowable expenses. Um, okay, yeah, so I've done that right. So allowable expenses is basically expenses for your business. Um, anything that is allowed, you can't be putting things that are personal on there because it's not for the business. So mine was the 5626. Then um, this again was not relevant, but it's capital allowance and balancing charges. Yeah, a lot of things that weren't relevant relating to property and yeah, nothing which I completely understand if I'm honest. Other tax adjustments, so goods or services for your own use, so things that you've taken out of the business, so say, I don't know, um, you ran, I can't think of an example, but say you were like a clothing business and then you took clothes for personal use, you would put that in here because you've taken the stock or profit out of the business, so then you put that in there. But I haven't taken anything, so um, that wouldn't go in there. More about grants, um, losses, which I haven't had. Um, yeah, then there's losses for 20 to 21, um, other business income, more about losses, none of which was relevant, tax deducted, so this is, as far as I'm aware, not relevant, um, it's more in relation to subcontractors, um, 
yeah, I didn't really understand that. I did read the extra info, but it was relate. It said it was relating to subcontractors who, um, what was it? In the construction industry. So I don't think it's relevant. Then you have class four national insurance. So you just tick any that are relevant, but none of these are relevant to me. Any extra information, which there was none. Then it gives you a little summary. Um, so it tells you your income, your allowable expenses, profit or loss, and then total taxable amount. So that means that you'll get taxed on that amount and then they'll charge you for that. And then I believe when they try to work out if you are owed a rebate, I believe that it's 20% of your expenses you get back. Um, because it's the tax on those expenses that you're getting rebated for. I believe that's how it works, but I may be wrong. Save and continue. Um, so if you're class two national insurance, if you earn under a certain amount, if your profit, so because although I earned 12,000, my profits were under the 6,400. So it means that I don't have to pay class two national insurance. Um, you can optionally put in for it. I don't really understand what it is as of yet. Um, and like kind of more so how it affects me. So that's why at the moment I'm not going to pay it. But I might voluntarily do it next year. Um, underpaid tax, if you know it. I, I looked on my P45 and I couldn't work out whether I owe anything. So I just put zero. Obviously, they will get in touch if it's wrong, so that's fine. Um, and then it just asks you where you want your stuff to go. Then we just have the summary again, which says that everything's entered. So, as I was saying before, the dogs went absolutely ballistic. Um, as far as I can see... It gives you this calculation and it says that that is how much is owed to me. So I believe that is because um, when I was at Crendon, which you would have seen like the 6,000, they obviously charged me tax based on me working there for the whole year. The same with Hamden, that's how it works. Um, they work out your monthly tax and it is worked out over the whole year and then you pay it monthly. Um, but obviously because I was only there for like three months or four months in each of those roles, they've charged me as if I was going to be over the 11,000 and I wasn't because I didn't work there for the whole year. So the tax that I was paying each month was too much. So that's why they're going to give me a rebate. Um, and then this is separate to your expenses. So this is because of I've paid too much tax for those jobs. Um, but then they will actually work out a rebate for your expenses. Whereas this is the amount of tax that I've paid. I hope that makes sense. So we're just going to save and continue. Um, save your return. I think that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm just going to do save and continue. I declare that I've included everything. Everything is correct to the best of my knowledge, which is all you can do. And then you just submit. 